Good day. Welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm Zephyr Pytel, and my dad's gonna talk about reduce voltage starters with friction friction brakes. Our objective is to examine a representative sample of reduced voltage starters incorporating friction brakes. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the friction brakes, primary resistor reduced voltage starters, part winding reduced voltage starters, Y start delta run reduced voltage starters, and soft starters lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you'll no doubt recall, friction brakes designed to bring a de-energized motor to a rapid halt are ordinarily spring-set, electrically released, fail-safe brakes. The brake solenoid must be energized by full line-to-line -line voltage for proper operation. Anything less than full voltage may fail to fully overcome the spring pressure and the friction brake may fail to disengage. Additionally, You'll recall reduced voltage starting methods serve to reduce inrush current and limit mechanical stresses to the driven load. Note the earlier introductory discussions on reduced voltage starter methods did not incorporate friction brakes and the de-energized motor was left to free spin to a halt. At first glance, one may assume there exists a fundamental disconnect between pairing a reduced voltage starter and an electrically released friction brake designed to operate at full voltage. However, friction brakes can be incorporated into these systems with relative ease. The guiding principle behind this being the simple question, where does a reduced voltage starter receive full voltage when started? For some reduced voltage starting methods, there is a simple and direct answer, and others may necessitate some thought. Today we'll examine four different reduced voltage starting methods incorporating friction brakes. Primary resistor reduced voltage starters, part winding reduced voltage starters, Y start delta run reduced voltage starters, and soft starters. Let's start first by examining primary resistor reduced voltage starters incorporating a spring set electrically released friction brake. Recall that a primary resistor reduced voltage starter incorporates resistors intended to carry primary current upon starting the motor. However, switched out of the circuit by the closure of the run contactor after a predetermined acceleration period or after reaching a predetermined speed. Ask yourself the question, where does this primary resistor reduced voltage starter receive full voltage when started? The answer is on the left hand or upstream side of the primary resistor bank. The closure of the start contactor only includes the primary resistors in series and the voltage drop occurs across the primary resistor bank. The line-to-line -line voltage upstream of the primary resistor bank and downstream of the start primary contactor is a perfect place to incorporate the brake coil of a spring set electrically released fail-safe friction brake. A brake coil wired line-to-line -line between L1 and L2 would receive full voltage and operate as expected and fully disengage upon starting this motor. After a predetermined period of acceleration or after reaching a predetermined speed, the closure of the run contactor would not affect the spring set electrically released friction brake and the brake would remain disengaged. When stopped, both the start and run contactor open and the spring set friction brake is engaged and brings the de-energized motor to a rapid stop as intended. Let's now examine a part winding reduced voltage starter incorporating a spring set electrically released friction brake. Recall that a part winding reduced voltage starter can only be utilized for low voltage Y and delta configurations of 9 and 12 lead motors. The part winding reduced voltage starting method only hooks up one set of windings to full voltage during start mode and then hooks up the other set in parallel during run mode. Ask yourself the question, where does a part winding reduced voltage starter receive full voltage when started? The answer is so obvious it may escape you since the term reduced voltage is a bit of a misnomer for a part winding reduced voltage starter. Note full voltage is applied to one set of windings during start mode. Immediately downstream of the closed start contactor is a perfect place to incorporate a spring set electrically released friction brake. 
a brake coil wired line to line between L1 and L2 will receive full voltage and operate as expected and fully disengage. After a predetermined period of acceleration or after reaching a predetermined speed, the closure of the run contactor would not affect the spring set electrically released friction brake and the brakes would remain disengaged. When stopped, both the start and run contact are open and the spring set friction brake is engaged and brings the de-energized motor to a rapid stop as intended. Let's now examine a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter incorporating a spring set electrically released friction brake. Recall that a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter can be utilized only for 6 lead and 12 lead motors in the lower high voltage configuration i.e. motors that are fully customizable with both ends of individual windings accessible. The Y-Start Delta Run Reduced Voltage Starting Method starts the motor in a Y configuration with full voltage and then, following an open transition, reconnects the windings in a Delta configuration to full voltage during run mode. Ask yourself the question, where does a Y-Start Delta Run Reduced Voltage Starter receive full voltage when started? Similar to our earlier discussion on incorporating friction brakes with part winding reduced voltage starters, the answer is again so obvious and may escape you since the term reduced voltage relies on a bit of mathematical trickery for a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter. The mathematical trickery stems from the difference between the comparatively lower line to neutral voltage experienced by a Y configuration and the comparatively higher line to line voltage experienced by a delta configuration. Note when started in the Y configuration, immediately downstream of the start contactor is a perfect place to incorporate a spring set electrically released friction brake. A brake coil wired line to line between L1 and L2 would receive full voltage and operate as expected and fully disengage. During the open transition from Y start to delta run, the Y contactor opens, briefly de-energizing the motor windings. However, the start contactor remains closed and the brake coil remains energized via the line-to-line -line connection. Therefore, the brake remains disengaged. The closure of the run contactor hooks the motor in a delta configuration with comparatively higher line-to-line -line voltage and does not affect the spring set electrically released friction brake and the brake remains disengaged. When stopped, both the start and run primary contact are open and the spring set friction brake is engaged and brings the de-energized motor to a rapid stop as intended. Let's now examine a soft starter incorporating a spring set electrically released friction brake. This scenario is a little bit more challenging than our previous scenarios and necessitates a re-examination of how we've been employing friction brakes thus far. Recall that a soft starter is a power electronics device that seamlessly ramps up applied voltage from a predetermined start voltage to full voltage over a predetermined ramp up time. Advanced soft starter features also allow soft stops by ramping down voltage over a predetermined ramp down time. Ask yourself the question, where does a soft starter receive full voltage when started, and for that matter, when stopped? The answer is, as presently configured, it doesn't. During the ramp up phase, the soft starter starts the motor at a predetermined start voltage and only after a predetermined ramp up time is full voltage applied. A soft stop further complicates matters because applied voltage is progressively ramped down to zero volts over the predetermined ramp down time. This necessitates a re-examination of how we've been employing friction brakes thus far. Let's first examine a soft starter with no soft stop mode incorporating a spring set electrically released friction brake. When the soft starter is enabled, applied voltage goes to the predetermined start voltage and progressively ramps up to full voltage over the predetermined ramp up time. When disabled, voltage immediately goes to zero volts. Again, no soft stop, just soft start. Note the primary schematic includes a brake coil not directly wired line to line, but rather connected or disconnected to line to line voltage at the direction of the B primary contactor. The B contactor is an ordinary three-pole magnetic contactor 
that has been repurposed such that only two of the available three poles are utilized. Note the brake coil and B contactor are above stream of the soft starter with continual access to full line to line voltage as all points downstream of the soft starter are subject to ramping voltage. The ladder logic diagram illustrates how the system coordinates the simultaneous soft start event and the full voltage removal of the spring set electrically released brake. We're assuming the soft starter, being a power electronics device, necessitates continuous connection to pilot voltage via the A1 and A2 terminals. The IN terminal enables or disables the soft start event. Note the E-stop and overload completely depower the soft starter for emergency events. Note when an operator initiates the soft start event by pressing and releasing the start button, the B contactor coil is simultaneously energized as is the ramp up event. When the B contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts change states and the B primary contacts close, energizing the spring set electrically released friction brake with full line to line voltage. Despite the soft starter starting at the predetermined start voltage, the brake coil experiences full line to line voltage and operates as expected and fully disengages. The ramp up event begins and the motor accelerates. Full voltage is then applied to the motor. We'll assume this soft starter is AC53A rated, meaning it is designed to not only initiate the soft start, but also indefinitely carry full load rated current. In contrast, an AC53B rated soft starter is meant to be bypassed and allowed to cool after the soft start event has occurred. Once we examine timers, we'll revisit this same scenario incorporating an AC53B rated soft starter that must be bypassed. When the soft starter is disabled by pressing and releasing the stop button, the B contactor coil is simultaneously de-energized. The soft starter halts conduction and applied voltage immediately drops to zero volts since for this application there is no soft stop event. When the B contactor coil is de-energized, its associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated states and the B primary contacts open, de-energizing the spring set electrically released friction brake. The friction brake is engaged and brings the de-energized motor to a rapid halt as intended. Soft starters and friction brakes incorporating a soft stop necessitate a slightly modified ladder logic diagram for proper functionality, and in doing so, opens up a whole barrel of rage-infected monkeys because it is our first exposure to time delay contacts. Note this content is introductory in nature and later lectures at the Big Bad Tech channel will discuss multifunction timers in greater detail. Note the primary schematic still incorporates a B primary contactor and brake coil above stream of the soft starter with continual access to full voltage. However, the ladder logic diagram now makes use of a new contact symbol. This is an off delay contact. An off delay is just one of the many functions available to a multifunction timer that does not instantaneously respond to stimuli, but rather does so after a user adjustable delay. For the purposes of this application, we're assuming the soft starter itself is capable of generating the off delay response. However, this might not be the case for all soft starters and may necessitate the use of a separate multifunction timer. This particular off delay is what is known as a NOTO, or normally open time opened contact. When a normally open timed open contact is activated to its opposite state, it closes, as would any other normally open contact. However, when de energized, a normally open timed open contact does not instantaneously revert to its deactivated open state but rather remains closed for a user adjustable delay period. Once the delay is elapsed, the normally open timed open contact reopens. The description explains its behavior succinctly. Normally open timed open is normally open and closes when activated. However, after being deactivated only reopens after a period of time. Off delays are also known as delay on de-energize, D-O-D-E, for similar reasons. When the soft starter in terminal is asserted 
by pressing and releasing the start push button, the associated contacts change states. The holding contact SST1 closes, as does the normally open, timed open contact SST2. The B contact or coil is energized and the B primary contacts closed. The brake coil is energized with full voltage and the brake disengaged the moment the soft starter initiates the ramp up event. The motor accelerates and after the ramp up time, full voltage is applied to the motor. When the soft starter is disabled by pressing and releasing the stop push button, the holding contact SST1 immediately reopens removing the holding circuit. However, the normally open, timed open SST2 contact remains closed while the soft starter initiates the ramp down event for the purposes of a soft stop. The off delay produced by the normally open, timed open SST2 contact ensures the spring set electrically released brake remains released during the ramp down event. When the ramp down time is expended, the normally open, timed open SST2 contact reopens and the spring set friction brake is applied, bringing the de-energized motor to a rapid stop. Note the off delay time must perfectly match that of the ramp down time if the motor is to be braked at the moment the motor is completely de-energized. It is for this reason we're assuming the soft starter itself is generating the off delay response. If you think about it, the SST2 contact is only asserted during the time period when the soft starter is supplying voltage and current to the motor, either ramping it up, keeping it at full voltage, or ramping it down. However, from the perspective of the input signal at the in terminal, it would be considered an off delay or delay on de-energized. When in is energized, the normally open timed open SST2 contact closes. When in is de-energized, the normally open timed open SST2 contact remains closed for the delay period only after which is elapsed does it reopen. Note the e-stop and overload still completely depower the soft starter for emergency events. When completely depowered, all contacts associated with the soft starter even those normally time dependent ones like SST2 immediately return to their deactivated state. The motor would instantly be de-energized and the brake instantly applied. Again, this is the briefest of brief introductions to just one of the many time-based functions offered by multifunction timers. Later lectures will discuss multifunction timers in greater detail and examine on delays, off delays, on and off delays, one shots, flash or recycle timers, and more. All right, this about wraps up our discussion on reduced voltage starters incorporating spring set electrically released friction brakes. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at primary resistor reduced voltage starters, part winding reduced voltage starters, Y start delta run reduced voltage starters, and stop starters with or without a soft stop incorporating spring set electrically released friction brakes. Additionally, we had an introductory discussion to time delay functions offered by a multifunction timer relay. We learned that the seemingly incompatible goal of reduced voltage starting and full voltage removal of friction brakes is an achievable and sometimes necessary reality. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.